What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we actually have a very provocative study. Now, <laughs> it's not what you think. Provocative in so far as uh, if you read the title and people did read the title because they started sending it to me like, what do you think about this? So the title is Metabolic Adaptation is an Illusion Only Present When Participants Are in Negative Energy Balance. People see that title, and I've talked about metabolic adaptation a lot, obviously, immediately. You, this says metabolic adaptation is an illusion. You said metabolic adaptation is important. Ah. Well, let's break down the study. So first off, uh, a really cool study. I like the study. It was actually part of a much uh, larger study, and they were taking obese men and women and putting them on a nine-week, thousand-calorie diet at different carbohydrate levels, spoiler alert, they all lost the same amount of weight across groups. So they put them on either, I think it was like 70, 100 or 130 grams of carbohydrate, but all the groups got a thousand calories and because they all lost the same amount of weight, they combined the data to look at this particular subject. Metabolic adaptation is basically how much lower is your metabolic rate when measured compared to what it would be predicted based on your lean body mass and fat mass using a predictive equation. There's quite a few studies to show that when you lose weight, after you are weight reduced, your resting energy expenditure or resting metabolic rate or basal metabolic rate, they're not completely interchangeable, but they're essentially the same thing, that you will have a lower resting energy expenditure compared to somebody who's never lost weight, all other things being equal. So if you take somebody, say they're you know 100 kilos, 20% body fat, and you take them down to say 90 kilos at 10% body fat, and you compare them to somebody who's 90 kilos at 10% body fat, but didn't have to lose weight to get there, even if they're saying body fat and fat mass, typically you will see in tightly controlled experiments, you will see the person who had to lose weight to get there have a reduced resting energy expenditure. So this has led some people, uh, like me, to say that this is probably a really important component. And there were some studies showing that your adaptive thermogenesis or your metabolic adaptation, another term for it, could predict who was more likely to put on weight. So these authors wanted to examine this. They had participants go on a thousand calorie diet. On average, those participants in nine weeks lost just under 15 kilos, which is a lot of body weight lost in nine weeks, which makes sense because they're obese and they're eating a thousand calories a day. Then they had them switch to weight maintenance for four weeks. They measured them at each time point and then they followed up after a year. Now, what did they find? Well, they did indeed uh, maintain their weight. In fact, the, on average, their weight maintenance was exactly what it was at the end of the diet after four weeks. After a year follow-up, I think they regained like four or five kilos. What you see is during the diet, they all lost significant fat mass and lost some lean body mass as well. Now what's interesting is the metabolic adaptation component, which is their actual measured metabolic rate compared to their predicted metabolic rate, was about 100 calories lower on average after this nine week diet, which doesn't sound like much, but in just nine weeks, that's, that's pretty significant. Then after four weeks at maintenance calories or maintaining their weight, they found that the metabolic adaptation was about cut in half, about 40 or 50 calories per day, difference between their actual measured metabolic rate and what the predicted metabolic rate was. Then after one year, there was no difference. A couple things. I think the title is very provocative and I don't think it necessarily agrees with their data. What I mean by that is even though putting them on maintenance for four weeks halved the metabolic adaptation, it was still present. Now the authors did bring up an interesting point. All three groups, even though they were eating different levels of carbohydrate, up to 130 grams of carbohydrate per day, uh, were in ketosis during the experiment. And they measured this by uh, ketone levels in the blood. We do know that a ketogenic diet can reduce overall body water. And when they put them back on a maintenance diet with more carbohydrate in it, it's possible that they regained some water weight and in order to keep their weight stable, they actually lost some fat mass. So it's possible that even after the four weeks of weight maintenance, that they were still in a negative energy balance, which might explain why they saw some metabolic adaptation. I wanna be clear, 
This is in opposition to several other experiments, including Kevin Hall's experiment looking at the Biggest Loser participants who had metabolic adaptation persistent even after six years and after they regained almost all the weight they lost. How do we put this study in context? Well, first off, I think this study might actually be good news. And I think it actually shows that things like diet breaks or periods at maintenance are really good for people who are wanting to minimize metabolic adaptation. This was first really shown during the Matador study, but I think this study kind of supports that. So if you're going to try to lose quite a bit of weight, I think putting in periods of eating at maintenance, according to this study, may actually reduce your metabolic adaptation and make it so that your weight loss efficiency or your fat loss efficiency is better. I think it's cool that they were actually able to recover their metabolic rate, their actual measured metabolic rate, even though they didn't regain nearly all their fat mass or all their lean body mass. Because previously, most scientists and a lot of evidence-based practitioners in our field had said, well, metabolic adaptation or resting energy expenditure is completely a function of lean body mass and fat mass, and it's not gonna to return to its original rate until you regain all your lean body mass and all the fat mass you lost. This study would appear to be in uh, counter to that sort of postulation where it looks like you can indeed recover your metabolic rate while not regaining all the fat mass and lean body mass you lost. So I think that's good. I think this study in itself does not in any way dismiss metabolic adaptation. Now what's interesting is the metabolic adaptation did not predict the weight regain amongst individual participants, meaning people who had a higher degree of metabolic adaptation weren't necessarily more likely to regain body weight. This is also in opposition to some other data we have. So putting this in context together, honestly, we just don't have enough studies yet to really know how key a role metabolic adaptation plays in weight regain. My personal opinion, I think it plays a pretty significant role, but behavior is the major driver of maintaining weight loss. It is maintaining those behaviors that allowed you to lose weight, even into weight maintenance, that is gonna allow you to lose weight and most importantly, keep it off. This is something I harp on over several chapters in my book, Fat Loss Forever. I think it's a cool study. I think the title is a bit misleading and a bit aggressive based on the data that they showed, but I do think it was a good study. So do I think metabolic adaptation is an illusion? <laughs> no, I don't. I think it's still a pivotal player, but we definitely need more studies before we can say conclusively. All right, guys, if you like this video, make sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and if you wanna learn more about metabolic adaptation, fat loss, weight maintenance, how to lose weight and keep it off, Check out my book, Fat Loss Forever. Links are in the description. I'll catch you guys next week.